Amen. Amen. What perfect timing for that song. If you all remember that we were here New Year's Eve, when each of the elders, we had a few minutes to just share certain things. And, uh, and God just began to deal with me near the end of last year about let go and let God. We hear it so much in church. Uh, everybody. Oh, child, you just got to let go and let God. Brothers, come on, man. You got to let go and let God. Can you feel like I'm hearing an echo? You just got to you know, let go and let God. And technically, there's, there, well, there is nowhere in the Bible that says let go and let God. But we use that scripture. I mean, not scripture, I'm sorry. We use those words day in and day out. But Proverbs, verse, um, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, and we all know that, but I'm going to read it. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That word heart is talking about your inner man. Because remember, God is a spirit. God is going to talk to your spirit. He's not going to communicate with your flesh. Amen. But trust in the Lord with all of your heart. That's why it's important to have the word of God inside of you. As we said earlier, I believe it's Matthew 12, 34 says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So when you get yourself tied up in situations, what's going to come out? Cuss words or the word of God? You know, what, what's going to come out in times of, 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 of circumstance and situations? You know, when you are going through that storm that was ordained by God. Because the Bible says Jesus, after he fasted for 40 days, the brother was hungry. <laughs> Uh, that brother, I'm sure that brother wanted to throw down. And the Bible says he was led into the wilderness by the Spirit. The Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. And Satan knew. And this brother just got me fast. I know this brother. This brother ready to throw down. So let's see what I can do to help him with this. If you are who you say you are, partner, turn this bread. I mean, turn the stone into bread. It is written. First thing he said, I was my, and that's the conscience we need to have, is what do we need? How do we respond to the enemy? It is written. And you recite what the word says. You got to get that word inside. Get it inside that inner man. So as you begin to grow and circumstance, situation rise up, the first thing come out of you is the word of God. Amen? Amen. And lean not on your own understanding. In other words, do not lean on your carnal fleshly desires or thoughts or whatnot. You know, that's what got you in the situation you're in now because of how you thought it should be and you know God you're taking a little bit too long in this situation so you know maybe I need to step in and, and, and kind of give you a hand here because uh, you know it seems like you know you, 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 you're you not showing up when I need you to so I tell you what you step back and let me do what I feel I need to do see let me get myself involved and get it all messed up that's why we got to trust and just give it all over to the Lord. And in all your ways, acknowledge or know him. And he shall do what he shall direct your path. And I don't know, you all may have heard me say, but that word path, is it, one of the interesting things I found out about it, it talks about childbearing. So I'm like, childbearing. But when the Lord begins to, to, to speak to you about things, and all of a sudden he places vision inside of you. And you, you know, you bring that thing, that gift, 
into this world for, for the people. That's what our gifts are for us. It's not my gift is not for me. My gift is for you. Your gift is not for you. Your gift is for me. But God will show me when I trust him at his word. When I trust him with this, he's going to show me how to bring that thing and raise it and be able to release it. Amen? Amen. We have to be confident in what God is saying is his word. We can't sway to the left or sway to the right. That's why it's important to get in the word, stay in the word, know the word, eat the word. <coughs> Turn with me to Matthew 13. Because I'm going to tell you something. The devil don't care if you go to church. He ain't got no problem with you going to church. He ain't got no problem with you lifting your hands up. He ain't got no problem with you singing. He ain't got no problem with you maybe even sharing. Because... The Bible says in Matthew 13, let me get over there. And it talks about the, the, the sower. I'm going to start at uh, Matthew 13, verse 4. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded the crop. Some 160, some 30. Okay, we know about that. See, the, the seed that was being sown was the word of God. Okay, and then over in, in verse 19 it says, When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. Now listen, when anyone hears... Okay, that word here is talking about God giving you the ability to have faith and understand and trust what he's saying. But when you don't understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in your heart. See, you can come to church all day, hallelujah, glory, you know, get your shot on, fall out, faint, and do all that stuff. But he's coming for that word. He's coming to see, oh, really, that word that was sown in your heart, do you believe that? Oh, you believe that you're healed by his stripes? Okay. Well, let's see. Throws out sickness at you. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and allow him to lead and guide you? The enemy, he's coming for the word. Amen? Amen. So let's see, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. Verse 20, but he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Woo, excited, happy, shout, shout, joy, joy. Yet he has no root in himself. But endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. And the King James Version says he is offended. You know, he's a little upset. He receives something. Oh, boy, happy, happy. Woo, praise your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And as soon as he get out of church, something happened. And then wham. And, oh, so... All right, you're a little happy about what you received. Well, let me throw this at you. But he's offended. Or she is offended. Verse 21, yet he... Okay, I read that. Verse 22, now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and deceitful of riches choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. That means unfruitful. Any thought not originated and empowered by the Lord, not born of faith. So what do we mean when we talk about cares of this world? Can we talk about our job? You know, different things where we put our job before the Lord. You know, 
Matthew uh, Matthew six talks about that. You know, being concerned with you know clothing, food, and all this stuff. And 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 near the end of that scripture, it says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things." Might be added, shall be added. All these things shall be added. See, when we put God first, when we let go and stop worrying, then that's when the story is going to change. And that's when God can step in because we've stepped out of the way. You know, we've moved ourselves out of the way so God can do what he needs to do. So now you say, okay, well, no, let me finish this before I go on. I'm going to get ahead of myself. Verse 23, but he who receives seed on the, on the good ground is he who hears the word, meaning that he received it by faith and he understands it. Meaning that he's able to discern what's going on with this word and applies it to his life or her life. He indeed does what? Bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, sixty and some thirty. It is important. It is vital. The most of you have to grab hold of this word. Like, Andy don't care if you go to church. But if you walk out here, you know, it, it's a shame to come, to go to church, and you know the word is being preached. I mean, revelation is pouring out of this house here. Amen. There is just no way anybody should be able to come in here mad and leave mad. That it's just it's just no way because God is here to meet the needs of his people. Amen. And we are some humble folk. We are some we want to hear from God. Pastor wants to hear from God. He wants to give us revelation. And as much work coming out of here, if you leave out of here, if you come in here mad and leave mad, something just wrong. It, I'm sorry, something just wrong. But the word is what's going to bring change in your life. Amen. Heaven and earth, it will pass away, but the word of God is everlasting. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. So we have to grab hold of the word. We have to believe what God is saying. Even when it just don't seem like it makes sense to us. You know, I, I, I think about, and I, I talk about myself. I think I know myself pretty good. You know, when I was getting out of the Air Force back in 99, and God said, come here to Sierra Vista. Come here. I mean, my, my first time visiting Arizona was in uh, July of 90, right before the first Gulf War. I, had to, I, I was sent out to Tempe for a class. I had to go to a class in the summertime in Tempe, in Phoenix. My first time, I said, who in their right mind would want to live in this place here? I was there for a whole week, seven days. When I, now I'm going to tell you, when I got off the plane, was walking through the, um, what do you call it? Terminal. Terminal. It was hot. <laughs> Leaving the plane. Going to the terminal. When I got my bags and we got our rental car, soon as I stepped out the door, whoosh, I said, Lord, really? When I left, I said, I will never ever in my life set foot back in this state again. Never. That's what I said. I said, never. I ain't never coming back to this place. I mean, there's a saying that says, man, this place is hot as hell. <laughs> That's enough right I'm like, Lord, I definitely don't want to go to hell. It's just hot, hot like this. It is, it's hot. So anyway, 40, nine years later, uh, January 99, I had come because of some friends I was stationed with over in Okinawa. They, got, they were in the Army. I was there for us. We went to the same church over there. They got stationed here. And uh, I'm stationed out in California, out of Edwards Air Force Base, where it was very hot as well in the summertime. And they came to visit me. So I said, well, I'm going to come visit y'all. So I came here um, January 99, Martin Luther King weekend. Came to this town, and I was like, wow, this is a nice, quiet little 
town. And at the kid, at the time, all my children were, were small. And I didn't want to take them back and raise them up in St. Louis, Missouri, where I'm from. I didn't want to take them back there. So all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, well, maybe I wouldn't mind. Not realizing what I said nine years ago, that I wasn't going to never set foot back in this place again. But so anyway, as you see, I'm here. June 17, 1999, rode here and been here ever since. <laughs> Going on 16 years. And throughout them 16 years, I asked God, so I'm ain't right here. Because it didn't go the way I planned. It didn't go the way that how I thought it should go. So I start trying to intervene and start trying to help God. But even me trying to help God didn't work because I was trying to get up out of here. I was sending out resumes everywhere to and fro. I mean all over the place. I mean I've had people that were in high position to look at my resume and say, this is good. You should be getting all kinds of job offers. Wasn't getting nothing. I even tried so much as I, we, I moved up in Tucson. I lived up in Tucson, uh, up in Vail for six and a half years. A uh, person from Raytheon that had some pool couldn't do nothing for me. I'm like, oh, I was so mad with God. And you all know that story. We don't need to go there. But I was just so mad. So I moved back down here and started the whole process. But anyway, when I decided, said, okay, this is where I need to be. This is where God has me. When I got out of the way, even though it didn't make sense to me, and a lot of things God says does not necessarily make sense to you. It goes against everything that you could possibly think or that anybody else could possibly think. But you got to trust God. Regardless of what it's, regardless of how it sounds. That's why it's important for you to spend time in the Word. That's why it's, it's important for you to spend time in worship. That's why, because God is a personal God. He talks to each and everybody in here. Everybody in here under the sound of my voice has a plan and purpose. God did not create you just so you can hem haw and shuck and jive and be just dilly dallying. He did not create you for that. He created you for a purpose. Even in the midst of the storm, you got to trust God. You got to let go and let God, regardless of how it's Because when all your flesh starts getting in the way of stuff, it's over. You just mess it up. Turn with me to John chapter 6, please. Is this helping anybody? Yes. Are we all right on this? And I, I, you know, I, I tell you, I'm just not um, just talking about this just because, but this is something that, you know, God started, you know, taking me through. Even, you know, the time when, you know, I had come back to the church and, you know, the, um, as the process began and whatnot, and, and the more that I began to, to uh, draw nigh unto him, because the Bible says, it says, submit, uh, James, uh, I believe it's chapter 4 it is, uh, maybe verse 7 or so. Let me see, do I have that written down in my notes anywhere? Yep, 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 James 4, verse 7, it says, to uh, submit yourselves to God. Submit to God. That means you get yourself down low, not my will, but your will. Then it says, resist the devil. And that word resist means to take a complete stand against a 180 degree turn conspicuously holding one's ground. And it almost, that word conspicuously almost means like you know where you know people are knowing what you knowing that you're going through some things or whatnot, but they see that wow he or she is standing their ground. They're trusting God. Don't you know that motivates somebody else to know that, man, if they went through and made it through and God delivered them, God can do the same because God is no respect of person. What he do for one, he'll do for another. Can you say amen? amen. amen. 
So it says, resist the devil, and he will flee. Then it says, draw nigh unto God. And when you draw nigh, guess what he's going to do? He's going to draw nigh unto you. Let's just turn there real quick. Edward, can you put that up for me? I'm going to read it from off the screen there. James, uh, go, go to verse 9. Go back one. Eight. Okay, there we go. Okay, now it says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh unto you. Okay. Now what I didn't understand, I was like, what is it? Clean, cleanse your hands, your sinners, and purify your hearts, you're double-minded. When the closer you get to God, it's like what Isaiah said, I'm a man of, of unclean lips, or uh, unrighteous, or, or, or whatever the case may be. The closer you get to God, you begin to really see who you are. And you're like, you, you, you have to let go of things. Yeah. You cannot stay in the presence of God and hold on to yourself. Amen. Something's going to die. Amen. Amen. Something has to die. So what happens, you begin to run. Man, you know, you just begin to cry out to God. Lord, take, I, I, I can't do this without you. You begin to realize that God is your first and foremost important source. Amen. He is your source. Not your resources. He created the resources, the source. He's your source. He wants to be your source. Amen. Amen. So the close as you draw nigh, and he draw nigh un unto you, there has to be change. There is no way you can stay in the presence of God and not change. Amen. It's just no way. Amen. All those things that you desire to do, all of a sudden, boom, you let them go. You know, you just might want to get mad and, 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 and cut somebody out, all of a sudden. Let that go. You know. All of a sudden. Okay, go ahead. Go to the next, uh, next verse. No, 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 no. Uh, nine. Verse nine. There we go. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. Because when you're doing it yourself, you think you got it going on. You're like, yeah, I'm a man. I got this. But again, as you come into the presence of the Lord... <laughs> You realize you ain't got nothing together, so that laughter gonna be turned. You're gonna be doing some mourning. You're gonna be doing some crying come on, come on, out on, because you're letting go and letting God. Come on, come on, sir. Again, there's just no way you can stay in the presence of God and not change. It, 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 it just can't happen. And I'm I'm talking from experience because I had to live this starting in 2013 all the way through 2014. Especially at the beginning of 2014, when God had me hemmed up in that bedroom, Saturday, February 8th, 2014, I was getting ready to watch this basketball game. Northern Iowa and Wichita State. And I'm right there, the game about to start. Lord said, cut the TV off and go to the back. I went, closed the door, and sat, and all of a sudden I just, I mean, just cried like a baby. And I just began to come, Lord, what's going on? And he just, I just began to, to see me. And he took me to the experience that Jacob had. When Jacob crossed over, he had to leave his family behind and cross over into Jabbok. Mm -hmm. And he wrestled with God all night long. Mm -hmm. I had to, I, God had got me to that point where I just began to, I really began to see. I began to really see Johnny Juan Rico Blair. I began to see it. and the closer as I began to get in worship and all of a sudden things shoom, shoom, things just began to fall off and your joy to heaviness is like Lord what next verse 10 humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and what does it say he shall lift you up. You got to go through the process, but you got to trust him through the process. You got to let go and let God. Like in the midst of the storm, he said, peace be still. Go to the other side. Because where God wants to take you, your talent can't take you. Mm. You've got to have the character 
of God. You got to know his voice even when he's telling you to go left, but it looks better going right. <coughs> Amen? Amen? Let's go back to John 6. I got a little time left. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm going to start at verse 60, but to lead up to the point, and we definitely can't go through because there's a whole lot. If you just go back and, and, and read through uh, John 6, starting at verse 22, Jesus talks about the bread from heaven that, you know, he is the bread and, you know, uh, they're going to have to partake of his body and all this. That These are his disciples now. And uh, verse 41, the Jews, they complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose, uh, whose father and mother we know? See, they became familiar with him. They said, oh, boy, that's just Jesus. I, boy, I remember you was running around. I used to change your diapers, boy. You, how many of y'all got family members like that? I know I, I've tried to, you know, share different things with, with, with family members. And it's like, boy, how you going to tell me something? Well, I remember when you was born. You know, da 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 they, People, be, they, they become familiar. So they was just, you know, real familiar. We're like, oh, that's just Jesus. That ain't nobody. <laughs> and then verse 52 says, now, now this right here. The Jews therefore quarrel, or in, in the King James it says strove, which means to, de to debate with great violence. Them brothers was upset about what Jesus was saying. And then, now listen to this. They quarreled among themselves. Now how can this now they done just said, how can this man, how can this man, in other words, they're lumping him with everybody else. They're not seeing him as the son of God. They just said as any ordinary man. How can this man, who is this man that can say all this stuff? Who is this man? How can he give us flesh to eat? They in common with him. But then verse 60, he says, therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, now again, heard, it means to hear God's voice, which prompts him to birth faith within you. When God is speaking to you, you're more than able to trust and believe him. But you just got to get yourself out the way and receive what he's saying. Because he, God is not going to mislead you. He's not going to misguide you. That's the enemy. the enemy. The enemy paints a pretty picture for you. It brings you right along and all of a sudden drops you. Drops you. But the God in whom I serve, the God in whom you serve, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, is not going to mislead you and not going to misguide you because he died for you. He shed his precious blood for you so that you can be in relationship with the Father. When his blood was shed, the Bible says the veil was ripped from, I think it said from bottom to top, meaning that now you can go in and have that personal relationship one-on-one -on -one with the Father. You don't have to depend on somebody else going into the holies of holies for you. You can do it yourself. I don't want nobody going in nowhere for me because they might forget something. You know, they might they, they might shortchange me. I don't need to be shortchanged. I can do that all by myself. I want to go in and hear what God is saying. I want to let go and let God. So I'm telling you, it can be done. I went through it and I'm just me. And God is no respect of person. But when you decide to say, okay, God, I'm through with this. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I've tried to do this, that, and the other. I'm going to trust you. Yes. Will it get harder? Yep. But that's when you keep praising. Amen. That's when you keep praising. Amen. I think it, it's a song that, 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 that we play. The harder it gets, the harder I praise. Mm -hmm. The louder it gets, the louder I praise. See, when you're focusing on praise, you're not focusing on the circumstance of the situation. You just let it go and let God. Regardless how it's going to turn out. I, you know what? I mean, I, I can just honestly tell you, when, when I got to the point where I just really 
let go and let God, all that other stuff. It just, it, it didn't matter. It really, it just really didn't matter. You know, I really had to trust him. Because I went through a whole time period where I was, I, I went unemployed for almost a whole year. Because the government canceled the contract that I was on. And it was crazy. But I had to trust him. And when I decided to let go and get my feelings out of the way and stop pouting, because you know what? You can yell, scream, pout, kick, fuss, cuss, and do all that stuff. When you get done, guess what? It's going to be right there waiting for you. It's, it's gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm still here. I'm, I'm still here. And you know what? What you don't defeat, you're going to repeat. Because in order for you to transition from point A to point B, you're going to have to defeat, you're going to have to face that Goliath. You're going to have to slay that Goliath. You're going to have to take the head off. Don't take the authority off of that thing and move forward. And move forward. aspect of your life. Amen? Amen. amen. That's good. Well, I got on that, but amen. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Okay, he's talking about faith. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Uh, therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Because they were like, what is this man talking about? You know, who is this man talking about? <laughs> giving us his flesh and, and he's the bread of life and blah, 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 blah. That word hard means they were to be stiff, stubborn. Describing who won't budge. Them brothers were so upset, and they was his disciples now. They were his disciples. They couldn't understand this. They said hey, they wouldn't even budge. God spoke it to them, gave them the ability to have faith in what he was saying, and they would not but they said, this is a hard saying. I can't do it. That's why you got to get your flesh out of the way. Because if your flesh ain't, mm -hmm. if your flesh ain't out of the way, guess what? Your flesh don't take over. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen. Then it says, who can understand it? In the King James, it says, who can hear it? Or there's another translation that I like. It says, who can accept it? Who can accept this? Who has the ability to have faith in what is being said, that he's the bread of life. Jesus said, the words that I speak are spirit and life. We've got to trust in what God is saying. We have to trust him with all of our heart and lean not on our understanding. Acknowledge him in everything we do. And he shall direct your path. Verse 61 says, when Jesus knew in himself that his, these are his disciples. These are people that are sitting up under his teaching. They're right there with him. And they couldn't understand what he was saying. They got mad. Them brothers was, some of them brothers was upset. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? Does this cause you to stumble? Does this cause you to, to, uh, to be hindered? Does this, does this entice you to sin? Mm. Does this cause you to say, I, I've had enough. I'm going back to do what I want to do. I, I, I can't accept this. Them brothers, that, that's a terrible situation to be in. You see, it's more to it than just you know, coming to church and, you know, sitting in, 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 in the pews or sitting in the chairs and, you know, getting up and, you know, because anybody coming here and lift up their hands and sing and, ooh, all about emotions. Anybody can put on a good facade. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Anybody can do that. Mm -hmm. The question is, what are you going to do when you get outside these walls? You see, you're having a good time right now. You're amongst the saints. But see, they'll be waiting to get you alone. So I got you now. Oh, you heard that word today? Oh, really? Really? Did God say? Oh, he, but did he mean this? See, you mean it. You got to say it is written. See, it's like when they was in the garden. 
You know, God told, gave the instructions, do not eat of the fruit. <laughs> but what did Eve say? We can't touch it or eat it. Mm -hmm. But God didn't say that. So when she grabbed hold of it and touched it and nothing happened, she said, oh, hey, maybe I can eat it because I touched it ain't nothing happened. And Adam right there. <laughs> Instead of stepping in, we all know the story. I was like, man, bone, my bones, flesh, and flesh shall be called one man. Mm. Therefore, I'm going to leave my father. I'm going to cleave to her. In the right aspect, yes. But God was his father. So his focus was her. Maybe that fruit tastes that good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Eyes were open. Oh, they seen they come down. And do they were naked. And God says, where are you? I was hiding because I was naked. Who told you? Who told you you were naked? Who told you you were oppressed? Who told you you were depressed? Who told you you was going to be just like your dad and just like your mama? Come on now. Who told you? Come on. Mm. It seemed like the church is, 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 is more conscious about what Adam and Eve did than the redemption of Christ and what Christ did. Mm -hmm. Come on, sir. Go ahead now. Mm. A third of the angels fell and two thirds stayed in glory. We more devil conscious than we are God conscious. Uh, mm -hmm. wow. See, who told you? Who told you that? When God says, I am Jehovah Ruffin, the Lord that heareth thee. I took all that up on me. I took my, I went to the cross. Stretched myself out wide. No hidden agendas, no nothing. Completely naked to reverse what Adam did. Adam said, I was naked and I was ashamed. Jesus on the cross, naked. Not ashamed. Took it up on him so that we wouldn't have to be shamed. So when the enemy speaks and says, you are this. No, it is written. By his stripes I'm healed. Amen. Are you broke, busted, and disgusted? No, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. You got to, got to get that word in you. You cannot be moved. You gotta be moved by what you believe, and that is the word of God. Amen? Amen. Again, and when God begins to speak to you, know the enemy, he ain't he, 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 he coming for that word. He wants to see if you believe what's been preached across this. Amen? Amen. Amen. Right. Got a few more minutes. Uh, da, 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 da. Verse 63. No, no, verse 62. What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the spirit who gives life. That word life means God infusing his life in the believer. We receive more of him when we obey him. See, when you step out in faith and trust God, and you see that thing come to pass, that builds your faith up. This is like when you go, you know, when, when you, you on the, you know, trying to lose weight or whatnot, and you get to that. Jim, and, and you see that you then lost five pounds, that motivates you. Amen. It's like, yeah, I can do this. Amen. And it makes you want to work out more. So the more as God just continues to show himself faithful to you, you just step out. You get out on the water. You begin to walk. You begin to have it. You begin to trust him. If he tell you to go left, you just go left. Even though it looked dark, gloomy, and all this, that, and the other. You just trust him. I'm going to trust you, Lord. Because you stepped out of faith. He's placing his life within you. That Zoe, the God kind of life. You are the tabernacle of God. God takes his very presence and he places it inside of you. You house the presence of God. You are the tabernacle of God. Amen? Amen. Does anybody have anything they want to say real quick? Amen. We all good. Everybody happy, happy, joy, joy. Amen. Verse 64. 
But there are some of you who do not believe. But Jesus knew from the beginning who they were and did not believe, who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to me by the Father. Verse 66. From that time, from that very moment, many of his disciples went back, meaning they went against what was said. That's what that word uh, back means, against. To go against what was said and walk with him no more. They were not, in other words, that word walk means to be occupied with. They no longer occupied themselves with the things of God because they could not find themselves to believe what he was saying. See, I, I like in Acts chapter uh, 17, uh, starting at verse 10, where it says, uh, Paul and, 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 and Silas, they had went to uh, uh, Berea. And it says, those the, the people in Berea were more noble or fair-minded than those of Thessalonica. Meaning that, you know, they had a little status or whatnot. But those jokers was in the Word. You just couldn't come into their church and start preaching something. And they just say, hallelujah, amen, clap your hands and go home. No, the, the, the Word says that those brothers got into the Scripture to find out if what was being said was true. See, you talking about wanting to grow in the things of God? See... The word that's coming across this pulpit, you should take that word home and listen to it. Go through them scriptures and allow God to take you on a journey. Allow God to take you on a venture and add on to what was already said. Just like Saturday, Pastor was talking about, we was at this men's fellowship and that word was powerful. Amen. And like he said, we were the only ones in there that was going, woo, good. Gracious alive, my, 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 because we understood what was said, because the same thing that the guy was saying, pastor was been preaching across the pulpit, so it was like confirmation. We were just excited about this word. Mm -hmm. And pastor was so stirred up, he got home and came in Sunday, and God gave him even more upon it. That's how you grow in the word of God. You have to get it inside of you. You have to go back and research the scriptures and allow God to, to take you in a different avenue of what he has for you. It's amazing how you can take one scripture here and God can give us each a different revelation behind that one scripture. That's how alive the word is. You have to trust the word of God with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding, regardless of how it sounds. But see, when you spend time with God, when you draw nigh unto him, you just trust him. Because you have that relationship. Go ahead, Twan. So when he says, um, from the time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more, why, why do you think that was? Were they seeking for something that they could gain, like fleshly? Because I see right here in 26, it says, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracle, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Mm. And what I get from that is, you know, could you, that... Our food that we eat, that only feeds the flesh. There you go, right there, their fleshly nature. Yeah. They couldn't understand it. They, they was more carnal minded than they were spiritually minded. Yeah. You know, he's talking about, okay, yeah, your, your, your flesh has been filled, but now we got to talk about your spirit man. Amen. Your spirit man needs to be filled with the bread of life, Amen. which is going to carry you and sustain you throughout. Amen. But they couldn't handle it because they were so carnal minded mm. that they walked with him no more. They ain't occupied themselves. And it's a lot of people like that in the church. And I tell you right now, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to come here and hear what is being said across this pulpit and leave. And will not be occupied with this ministry again. That's just the nature of the beast. Amen? Amen. But how many of you know we're in a good place? We're in a good place. God is here. Amen. Hallelujah. So from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Je then Jesus said, he noticed he didn't go back and go after him. Say, hey, come on, fellas, come on, give me another chance. You know what? When people separate themselves from you, let them go. Let them go. Do not go after them because they ain't going to do nothing but hinder you. Because they may come back and believe you for a moment. Then you start saying something else. All of a sudden, they're going to go through that same thing. What you mean by that? 
Let them go. Adios, Ariva Darchi, Sarnar, Deuces. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. I ain't going nowhere. I understand what you're saying, Lord. I'm hearing. I don't quite understand it, but I'm trusting you. I'm going to take you at your word. Because I know you're going to see me through. See, that's how you got to begin to talk to your circumstances and situations. When the enemy starts rising his head up, like I said, when it get louder, you get louder. You praise louder. You praise harder. And keep that train going. And you'll find out the more and more you do it, it's like working out. Your little muscles. Your faith gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You just trust God more and more. <coughs> let go and let God. And let me just end with this right here. Going back to Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. In other words, do not be wise with your natural senses or that carnal nature. The appearance of what you see. Fear the Lord, have reverence, and depart from evil. Now the word evil is talking about adversity. Depart from it. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Can you say amen? amen. Is God good? Yes. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. We can do better than that. Hallelujah. We serve a true living God. We serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God. We serve El Shaddai. trust in you. I'm going to offer you a sacrifice of praise. Why? Because I'm the tabernacle of God. You dwell inside of me. So I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to open my mouth. I'm going to surrender. I'm going to lift my hands unto you. I'm going to trust you with all of my heart. I ain't going to lean on my understanding, Lord. I've already done it. And look at the mess it got me in. So Lord, I'm turning it over to you. I'm relinquishing self. I'm dying to self. The more I die, the more you shine. The more I die, the more people see you in me, through me. Not I, but it's Christ that live and dwelleth in me, that rule and reign. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. God Almighty, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Every word of God is pure. Every word. Thank you, Father. Amen. I just trust that you heard from God this evening. And that you will take this word and go back. And allow God to begin to minister to your spirit and take you on a direction that he wants to take you. He is the author and the finisher of your faith, of our faith. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. God wants to build character in you. And the Bible says that he will exalt you. See, when he exalts you, can't nobody knock you down. If man exhausts you, man will knock you down. First time you tell him or her no, get off the pedestal. But see, when you do it God's way, when you humble yourself, when you allow him to put his character in you, when you trust him, 
when you take your schedule and put it in Him, then He can he'll take you through, but then all of a sudden, He'll put you up on the pedestal and say, This is my son, this is my daughter, whom I'm well pleased. Oh, yes. yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Oh, yeah. Do your thing, son. Do your thing, daughter. Because he knows you will make it all about him. All about him. Come on, give him a hand, pray. One more time. Hallelujah.